Have you ever looked up at the night sky and think to yourself, has it always been this way? The answer to that is no, it hasn't. Our universe was created by an event called the Big Bang. You might also wonder, what is this Big Bang? Well, for starters, up until 100 years ago, most scientists thought that our universe has always been like this. In 1912, Vestal Slipher started noticing that almost all of the nebula was receding from Earth. Originally, anything that was not a star was called nebula. Oddly, he didn't fully grasp the whole idea, and was a big controversy whether or not these so-called nebula were island universes. Now, ten years down the road, a man named Alexander Fredman made the Fredman equation, which derived from Albert Einstein's equations of general relativity. This showed that the universe could be expanding, opposite of the static universe model Einstein created. In the year 1924, Edwin Hubble's measurement of the distance to the closest spiral nebula showed that these systems were actually other galaxies. In 1927, Georges Lemaitre, who is a physicist and a Roman Catholic priest, thought that maybe the recession of these galaxies was due to the expansion of our universe. Now in 1931, Lemaitre went more into depth and suggested that the clear expansion of the universe, if we went back in time, meant that the further we go into the past, the smaller the universe once was, until at some point in time of the past, all of the mass of the universe was solely concentrated into one single point, a primeval atom, where and when time and space came into existence. Now do know that when it was inflating, that it all happened in the first few milliseconds, but eventually slowed down. In a nutshell, the universe started in an extremely hot and dense state which caused it to expand rapidly. This rapid expansion caused the universe to cool and resulted in its present continuously expanding rate. The Big Bang happened around 13.75 billion years ago. After its expansion from a singularity, the universe cooled a lot to allow energy to be changed into various subatomic particles like protons, neutrons, and electrons. Now the protons and neutrons combined to form the first atomic nuclei a few minutes after the Big Bang. It took thousands of years for electrons to combine with them to create electrically neutral atoms. The first element made was hydrogen, along with traces of helium and lithium. Huge clouds of these elements would go through gravity to form our stars and galaxies, and the heavier elements would be condensed within stars or during supernovae. Now the formation of the galaxies happened after the Big Bang. For a time the universe was basically smooth and had no structure in it. As our universe cooled, clumps of dark matter began to condense and within them gas began to condense as well. The fluctuations attracted gas and dark matter to the denser areas, and thus, the seeds that would later become galaxies were formed. After the Big Bang, the universe was basically smooth, with just small ripples in the matter. The ripples grew larger due to the gravity forces acting on the dark matter particles. Eventually, gas was pulled into the forming structures, leading up to the formation of the very first stars around 100 million years after the Big Bang occurred. The sun was created through dust and gas 4.5 billion years ago. The remaining dust and gas that was left after the formation of the sun created our planets. Now, with all this information that has been said, you're left to wonder, what's gonna happen? What's the fate of the universe? Well, think of dough. Now, if you were to put raisins inside the dough, the raisins being the galaxies and the dough being the universe, and put it in the oven, you'll see that the dough will expand. As the dough expands, the raisins stay in the same place. Basically, raisins are in the same place as before, but the space between each raisin has stretched. Now, if you were to leave the loaf of raisin bread to cool off, it turns cold, and no one likes eating raisin bread when it's cold. Basically what I'm saying is that the universe is going to expand so much that it will eventually get too cold to sustain life. People call this the big freeze. Of course, there's another theory that the universe will recontract into what it once was, a hot and dense state. That theory is called a big crunch. Don't worry though, none of this is going to happen for a few trillion years. 
That gives us enough time to research more about the fate of our universe. Who knows, maybe in the end we're left with a loaf of cold raisin bread. Thank you.